Matt Porter is our gadget guru from Matt Porter Web Design at Innovation Marthasham on Adastral Park. Good morning, member Good morning. of the Frankie Goes to Hollywood fan club, I hear. I was, yeah, I was yes. Um, I joined, I was a, quite a fan anyway in the uh, mid-80s when they yeah. were having all their number ones and all of their success. Um, and then they released their second album, Liverpool. And uh, at that point, they, they launched a fan club, um, which I joined. And which was very interesting, and then they split up. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, though, I'm friends with uh, three of them, three of the members on Facebook, and uh, oh, really? I, regu- I regularly talk to uh, Nasha or Brian Nash, the guitarist. He's a very nice guy. So the interesting thing is, you don't actually necessarily now need to have a fan club because you Facebook pages, Twitter. Well, yes, I guess so. I think that what was appealing about fan clubs when I was a lad was that if you were a member of the fan club, you had special edition singles. So there may be a Christmas single where uh, the band might sing uh, Christmas carols to you, or they might. So there'd be special, um, exclusive things yeah. that were fan club only, and you just felt like you were in touch with them that little bit more. Of course, mm. with social networks, yes, you can be in touch, like I am. Yeah. Um, um but uh yeah i think it was the the exclusive exclusivity made you feel special didn't it uh i was just a member of the brian maxine fan club the wrestler and that was it really <laughs> very so, good uh, but i got a christmas card and a birthday card yeah. every year and you get to meet him and he put you in a headlock yes like that. <laughs> <Hello boy. laughs> now uh driverless cars are in the news today driverless car technology is to receive a 20 million pound funding boost in the hope it can help transform travel by making roads safer and reducing traffic jams they hear a lot of about the Google driverless cars, don't mm-hmm. you? Uh, they're being tested all the while, and technology is is moving on apace. Um, this weekend, you've had a Tesla, which yeah. is an electric car. Now, you've tested these before. I have. Um, and you took me for a ride in this yes. at the weekend. And as well as being a very, very nice car, <laughs> yes, right, there is yeah. some incredible technology on board. Yes, the, the point, actually, of this review, other than getting the opportunity to drive an amazing car again, was that... The uh, Teslas themselves are updated constantly. They're a bit like, well, they have computers on board, and those computers are updated, much as our computers are at home, but they have uh, over the air because they have a 3G um, uh, data connection. And what happened in the last couple of weeks was that a new version of the software was released which enabled um, the autopilot software on the car. Um, Tesla are... um, said to me it's not autonomous it's not an autonomous driverless um feature what it really is is um enhancements to cruise control so what the autopilot software gives you is auto steer functionality um auto park and um traffic aware cruise control speed automatic speed control and things like that so the car is more aware of its surroundings than a normal car with cruise control and because of that in the right conditions you can switch on auto steer and it will line itself up on the road be aware of the traffic around it and it will um, take you on its merry way they were very strict to tell me that I must keep my hands mm. on the wheel at all times because it's obviously the law that you should be in control of a car at all times. Um, and lots of people have been putting videos on YouTube where they're not in control blatantly. Um, but it was very, very interesting because you're holding the wheel and you can feel it steering for you. If you want to indicate from lane to lane, you simply ensure that it's clear around you and and you indicate, give the wheel a slight tip and then it completes the lane change for you um, and uh, makes life very easy. So it's a driver assist almost then in a way. That's exactly what they're they're marketing it as. They have to be very careful how it's marketed because if it's marketed as autonomous and people start driving around um, With their feet up on the dashboard. There there was, there have been um, a number of videos pasted on put on YouTube where people have put them in auto park and climbed mm. out the window and let the parking finish on its own. And you've got like a because auto um, park, we parked the car, you push the button and it and it auto parked. But then I mean, there are plenty of other cars that will auto park now, aren't there? Yes, there are. Yeah, there's this one uh, uh, again. They're telling me is most the most complete solution because most other auto park um, functionality that I've tried requires you to engage drive to go forward, and then it will tell you to engage reverse <laughs> to go back. 
this car it does it all just of does that it. for you yeah so you just press press the button on the screen and then let it do the park for you yeah and so this is a vehicle um which is very common over in california isn't it in yes. the united states yeah and uh, they are quite expensive this one was over a hundred thousand pounds wasn't it yes the the model s as a vehicle, the starting price is fifty thousand yep. in the UK, and gradually goes this up was quite depending loaded, on wasn't it? as you load it. So, uh, I had the P eighty five D. The P is the performance editions. The eighty five is the battery size, eighty five kilowatts, and the D means it's four wheel drive dual motor, um, and it had leather interior, yeah. glass roof, absolutely yeah. air suspension, the whole thing. Okay, yeah. and uh, performance was was stunning. At one, <laughs> at one point, you pushed a button called insane mode um, and it, it the acceleration was phenomenal um, so where are they going with this technology where I mean are we going to see driverless cars I think that that is going to happen in the next 10 years um, because the technology oh, you'd, you'd be happy with that you'd be able to go in there and you'd better sit on your laptop or whatever and <laughs> work away as the car was just driving itself um, would it's... you be comfortable with that I think that no, not no. I don't know really. I saw I would become comfortable with it as I became more um, certain that I wasn't going to have a pile yeah. up. Um, it's interesting when I was driving that with auto steer when it did get confused and it would switch itself off. So it, it, if it can't auto steer for you, it will switch itself off, and that can be a simple problem for an, for a human mm. to to um, overcome, such as cones in a little bit of uh, roadworks or something like that something slightly out of the okay. norm and it couldn't actually work that out uh, allegedly it's learning all the time yeah. so perhaps and what do would. they want this to do because they, they, they yeah. th you can almost kind of whistle it can't you so yeah. you can park it in a supermarket car park somewhere stand by the That's the entrance and go whatever and, and the car <laughs> will come out and come to you the in the states which hasn't been ratified in europe yet in the states there is an enhancement called summon um where you have your car in the garage with your electric garage door you stand by your front door or wherever you press the button three times it opens the garage door the car will drive out very slowly and and park next to you you come home from work and you do the same thing you go and let it go and park itself so that's called summon the um the the the, the ethos for that i guess or the, the in ahead is that elon musk the owner of of tesla and spacex he's and mr paypal he was he? originally part yeah. of paypal um he his his plan is that you will be able to summon your car wherever you might be so um if you are um i don't know somewhere else in the country you should be able to summon your car and it will come and it get will come you. driverless to you yeah but obviously we're looking at some significant number of years down the way um but it's interesting there's lots of autonomous vehicles um in being tested at the moment so the technology is actively being tested so mm, we shall okay. see uh, grumpy league's not impressed driverless car so what happens in a crash who's at fault or do you sue the company that made the car you if you're in this case you are responsible for driving that car whether it's got all of these autopilot and everything yeah. it's your fault if you crash and you know if you if you as you would be so you because you're, you you are responsible for that car hence you keep your hands it's on, on the, the wheel. steering wheel driverless cars um autonomous vehicles which is what google are testing and things like that um i believe you still there's mm. you're still going to be responsible okay. for the car and at 50 grand he says i'll have two um <laughs> another <laughs> there is a cheaper one apparently in the next two or okay. three years all right they are developing it all the while and the batteries are improving all the while as well aren't they yeah uh they're, they're, I mean, it's not the, a milk float anymore by any means no it, that's no? an 85 kilowatt um battery and it's not one battery it's, 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 it's seven thousand cells yeah, okay there's a 90 kilowatt um version available now as well John emailing in reference to the driverless cars. My first thought was the very old joke about the pilotless airliner. Uh, the passengers are all sitting in the cabin at 40,000 feet when a mechanical voice comes over the PA. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the world's first completely automated airliner. There are no crew in the cockpit, but please do not be alarmed. Our designers have worked for many years perfecting the system so that absolutely nothing can go wrong. Go wrong. Go wrong. Go wrong. <laughs> you just... It's going to take a bit of convincing, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think in the in London at the moment, there's going to be a trial where the I think it's the the the, the um, vehicles that take you around um, 
Heathrow. Yeah. At the moment, they're going to start using those in uh, part of London, I think. Mm, um, okay. But there will have to be somebody sitting there as a steward, if you like, within the vehicle. Can't you have the ones that was in Johnny Carr in um, <laughs> what was that film with um, what's his face? Arnie? Total Recall. Total Recall. Johnny yeah, Carr. Yeah. That's Johnny what you want. <laughs> Little Johnny Carr. Or yeah. on the airplane movies, you have the yeah, autopilot. The, the inflatable <laughs> autopilot, yes, I know. That's what you need. Uh, we're going to talk to a futurologist on the show very shortly. I'd love to hear from you. Would you trust a driverless car? Uh, talking about this Tesla car, which was £110,000 worth of motor car, but the technology on board that was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, autopilot, it's called, and it helps keep you on the straight and narrow, helps you change lane, and it will park for you. And that's weird, just taking your hands off and just letting it do it all. That's just yeah, really well, weird. When we were parking, you at that point, you take your hands off the wheel because the wheel's spinning Spins around, around quite, yeah. quite rapidly. Uh, and that is quite... Um, unnerving watching some especially when you're parking between other cars and yeah. you think oh that You've looks a bit close you've got to test it you know yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> uh barry's been in touch interested in the self-driving car does this mean that you will now be able to sit and eat a banana without being prosecuted by the police well i suspect when they come in you'll be able to do all sorts while the car's driving i assume once the um technology is 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 okayed and signed off that it's safe for you to do that i guess that would be the case yeah yeah yeah. because you can uh you know a lot of them have got crash stuff on now haven't they to you know when you get near to something they'll slow you down and yeah all of that you know so a lot of the technology's there yeah the technology just doesn't cover things like pedestrians walking out in front of you you know you then that's where it, that you know you've literally got to be in control of a car dr ian pearson is with us now he's a futurologist based in ipswich ian good morning good morning thank you for joining us on the program um i go back to uh the the 60s and the 70s and lots of people predicting at this time we'd be flying around in cars and doing all sorts of different things yet we're still on the ground we're still on four wheels pretty much although we are heading into uh, amazing technology now yeah, you know, technology is really heading forwards in leaps and bounds now. It's accelerating all the time. In fact, I, I don't think even the acceleration will slow down during our lifetimes. So we've been talking about um, an electric car, uh, and when you compare um, this this Tesla that we were driving at the weekend with uh, some of the electric cars of years gone by, uh, my goodness me, the, the improvements are phenomenal. Yes, we're seeing big breakthroughs in the <clears throat> storage for the energy as well for these. The, uh, the batteries in these electric cars at the moment, they're based on lithium. They, they've got various problems. I mean, they don't last forever. They seem to break down after a few years and need replaced, and they're extremely expensive. But people are looking at new ways of, of powering these cars. One of the really good ideas, I think, is using the uh, idea of an inductive loop that you build into the road surface and you charge up the car as it drives over it. So maybe if you've got one of these every 50 or 100 metres, the, the, the car is constantly being charged up. That means it only needs a very small battery to get you from the main road through to your uh, local address. But while it's on the main road, it's constantly being topped up. And the, the, the technology that goes with that is the thing called a supercapacitor, which is just a great big capacitor, which is uh, kind of like a battery, but it uh, stores the energy in a different way. And that's charging ahead, too. But there's, uh, I was just going to say, Matt, there are a lot of charging stations around now for these vehicles, aren't there? All sorts of electric charging stations around. Yeah, I found, actually, since... It was actually a year ago that I'd last tried a Tesla and, and have tried electric cars since, and I was surprised at the improvement of the charge points around as a, as a network um, around the country, particularly this side of the country. Uh, around London, you haven't mm. got a problem, but over here, getting a, what you need is a fast charger, a rapid charger, a fast charger, which a car like the Tesla has got such a large battery you do need to be able to put the power in there at a, a decent rate or you'll be there for hours on end um the inductive side as well i've 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 read about um that i think there's a trial going to be put in place in the uk for a piece of road that's going to have inductive um uh, a track put into it and i believe the porsche mission e which is was announced earlier in the year. That's got inductive um, support for it. So yeah, it's definitely Incredible the right stuff. way to go. And, and Ian, when it comes to you know this this one we were testing has got autopilot on. You know, oh. helps you keep in the lane, helps you change. It'll reverse park for you. Um, the, the technology is kind of there, isn't it, for driverless vehicles? But it's just going to take a huge leap for us to to trust this kind of technology. Yeah, it's it's almost there now. Well, we're seeing lots of trials around the world of these self-driving 
cars and they have very few accidents but they they still have one or two and it's uh even the people that are allowing them to be used on the roads are insisting that there has to be a human being there to take control if something goes wrong. But give it another few years, uh, self-driving cars probably won't have any accidents. But the really good things about them is that they they can drive really close together. You could uh, you could drive literally a few millimeters apart because the engines, uh, uh, the cars can talk to each other and they can negotiate uh, uh, spaces at roundabouts and things. So they can interleave, almost eliminate congestion. You can uh, have uh, much more environmentally friendly. You can get rid of accidents, and it could also reduce the cost. But the, however advanced these uh, Tesla things seem to be today, very soon they're going to look pretty primitive. That technology will roll down into ordinary cars very quickly, and we'll see the rollout of the self-driving cars. But what comes after the self-driving car is the driverless car. Uh, you don't actually need the uh, even the car itself to have all the intelligence and the engine and the battery, it's entirely possible to drive completely dumb pods around using the using the road surface. You can put uh, linear induction mats, for example, and use technology which is in routine use in lots of railways around the world already. You can apply that to cars, and you, you could actually have the cars p- propelled and navigated by the road surface itself with the intelligence built into that and the mobile phones that people have got in the pockets as they travel in these cars as as passengers also provides a huge amount of intelligence for the navigation and where the people need to go and so on and that is very exciting because it could reduce the cost of these cars from i think the the, the google one's about thirty thousand dollars or something they're expecting to bring them out uh you could actually do those for about three hundred dollars quite literally if all you have to do is make a fiberglass box with a, a metal plate on the bottom of it to propel it and to levitate it you don't need wheels you don't need the engine you don't need the battery and you don't need the electronics all the rest of it uh uh, it can, can be done entirely by the infrastructure. So that's, that's what comes after the self-driving cars. They look quite primitive very, very quickly. Well, it's the fun in fixing a puncture and all that. <laughs> 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 it's just mind-blowing, really. It, it, it is mind-blowing. And the I think uh, one, one of the things that people keep talking about today as if it's some sort of panacea is public transport. I think it's very predictable that public transport will be replaced initially by self-driving cars. Uh, There'll be huge fleets of these owned by big uh, fleet management companies or maybe even the car manufacturers themselves might run their own fleets. Um, When when little old lady uh, looks out the window and it's pouring down and thinks of a half-mile walk to the nearest bus stop where she has to stand in the cold waiting for the uh, bus to come, I think she'd be quite grateful with a self-driving car arriving at her front door and picking her up and taking her exactly where she needs to go. So, you know, I, I think social inclusivity is another major benefit that we don't often talk about when we talk about these self-driving cars. You know, we look at the uh, other things, but social inclusivity... Yeah, but the thing is, Ian, uh, the thing is, it's all well and good, but we're talking this morning on the show about the, the lack of road markings and potholes being fixed. Uh, and, and, you know, in, in rural areas where we do have rural isolation, there are little or no bus services. I mean, the technology is not, not going to be putting the road surfaces out to the villages, is it? No, what, what, I, what I would envisage is you would uh, have all of the areas where within a typical park and ride system, for example, you would make the entire city centre... Uh, compliant with these vehicles and they'd be basically be all m- more or less the same size pods going all over the place. Uh, outside of the towns you do still need to have fairly conventional technology to get you along mm. the country lanes. It'll probably be decades before we roll out the technology that far but certainly for towns and cities we can uh, convert those to almost entirely self-driving cars and driverless cars over the next decade or two and we can see all the benefits coming from that fascinating stuff ian thank you very much indeed dr ian pearson who's a futurologist based in ipswich uh and, and amazing when you when you just think um where we are with these cars now what they can do it's just it just is mind-blowing i wonder though with regard to public transport whether we we as a, as a sort of race we're anti-social enough aren't we um but if we're starting to then compartmentalize everybody into small into pods pod. so they never actually have to talk to anybody That'd at all no <laughs> well, well yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting isn't it that, that that's kind of what the the end result is that you know sometimes you mm. do end up having a conversation with people to while away the time but if you're sitting in a a little private pod then uh 
Yeah. Theon. Ray in Kessingland has just been in touch. He wouldn't trust a car. Uh, like this to um, to do anything. He, he has a car with loads of electronics in it, and just today something happened which interfered with them. So he's, you know, it's going to take. A, I think it's a lot of convincing needs to be done. Well, it, it, I mean, I, I'm broad-minded over yeah. these things, but it, I, you know, it took me a while driving from Heathrow to Ipswich to become relaxed with what I was dealing with, yeah. because up until that point, I was very, very nervous about what was happening. You know, and once I relaxed after a while, I thought, okay, this it's is like actually get used to it. it's. It's meant to make it a long journey, less tiring. That's the idea. OK. Matt, thank you very much indeed. If you want to find out more, thegadgetman.org.uk, thegadgetman.org.uk. 